Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about lines of code and one of the things that I think is so tricky about figuring out in it, it's uh, why it's so tricky to figure out how good or bad or product let's just call it productive a developer is so let's get into it now the other day we were working on this story right and the thing is that it's one of those stories that mentally seems extremely easy to do we were adding some monitoring like additional monitoring to our system right and as we were working we kind of had this like we will just we basically just prepped the story right we started talking about basically what the scope was and how much work was going to be entailed into it and finally we decided that hey this is probably just going to be a day's worth of work and so then i pick up this story right and i start looking into it and the thing is when I got down to it and I started looking at it, I figured out that it was virtually just a one-liner or a two-liner. It was like literally that much, much of code, right? So implement it, right? Just add those two lines of code and then I put, up it, put it up for a code review. And so then one of my coworkers comes over and he has a look at it. And as we start talking, we kind of, just by talking, we start to realize that, hey, are we li really logging, are we really monitoring the type of traffic that we're interested in? Because the goal was to monitor like failure rates on a connection that happens, well, basically we have its third party integration, right? And the system is not trivial in the sense that we can just ignore a failing request. We need to make sure that if the request fails in a certain frequency, we need to be notified about it because it's a critical integration for the application, right? And as I said, like we had just, okay, I mean, adding some monitoring, that should be easy, right? Well, all we need to do is to have a connection to something like Prometheus, for example, which is what we use, right? To just increment a certain metric so that we know what the success rate and the failure rate of this call is. But then we start talking about it and then we, we kind of go, hmm, is this enough? Are we covering all, all of the cases here? Because the goal of the software or the goal of this story is to be notified if there's an issue with our connection to our third party. But this, this piece of code here will only tell us what the, like, what the outgoing calls from our perspective are going to be. Like basically, it's, all it's monitoring is whether or not we can connect to our third party. And maybe that's enough. But we want to know if anything is wrong with this third party connection. And then we started looking into it. And then we realized that, hey, we have all this, these other endpoints and all these connections between us and the third party. And we would have to monitor all of these connections in theory in order to actually achieve this goal. So we kind of go, oh, hmm. And we start talking about it. We talk, we talk back and forth, like how can we solve this in a, in a reasonable amount of time for about an hour. And then one of us just has this great epiphany. Hmm, maybe we should go and look at the flow chart that over, for an overview of our system integration. And we go, we go and have a look at that, right? Because, you know, the system is fairly large and it's hard to keep everything in your head. And we look at the flow chart and we realize that the third party is actually, like the, our assumption is that the third party, uh, that we are calling the third party, but we want to know if their connections to us, to us fail, fail as well. That's the goal, right? So we are only ca covering half of our case, right? So when we are looking at the flow shot, we realize that this endpoint is just a proxy that goes to, from us to them, but they are the initiators of, of the call. In other words, our user uses an application through them that then connects to us and then we connect to their systems in order to do some business and get pitch some data and do some business logic and return the whole thing. And when we then start to talk about it, we realize that, damn, hmm, we're actually covering both these use cases from just this one little simple line of code here, or two lines, there's two lines of code. So 
our original assumption, the thing that we have been discussing back and forth for a good hour, we're probably one and a half hours into this, we figure out that, hey, we're actually covering our ass. The, the, the original code will actually be good as is. And so we finally decided, yeah, okay, we'll just go with this. Because we are technically, we, we, we are actually, actually achieving the thing that, that we want. And that's what I want to touch, touch on. When I submitted, or rather when we submitted this merge request for review, and we put a number on the time estimate, or rather the estimated time for how long it t this took. I think I jotted down two hours, two hours of work or something like that, for two lines of code. Now, if you just look at that as a third party, if you just look at, okay, it took you two hours to write two lines of code. That's not a whole lot of code for two hours of work, worth of work. And that's what I want to touch on. That's why it's so tricky to figure out how productive a, a programmer is. Because if you look at the lines of code as an indicator of how much productivity somebody has achieved, you're missing one critical, critical thing with, with it all. And that is that the lines of code that you write requires a person to understand a greater whole. To give you a good illustration, if you, have a mar two, if you have two martial artists, a white belt and a black belt, that throw a punch at an opponent. Now, from an outside perspective, it may look as it's the same thing. It may look as, I mean, the white belt is going to be able to be able to throw a punch in the same manner as a black belt. But what's happening in the heads of these two practicers, these two martial artists, are worlds apart. Because there are, like, the black belt in, is going to have a lot more experience and more thought process going into what, he, he, what, what that person is doing as opposed to the white belt. And this is very much the same thing. Because although it's two lines of code that took two hours to write, the amount of mental work that was needed in order to produce those two lines of code was immense. It was actually necessary in order for the code to be correct or for us to be able to ship a feature that did what we actually wanted. We actually had to discuss and we had to talk about it and we had to think about it we had to reference some documentation there was all this other work that you do not see in the end results that went into doing the thing that we needed to do and that's what I want you to take away from this never take lines of code as an indicator as to productivity now this makes it a horror show to evaluate somebody's productivity, but it's also why I argue that it's so tricky to figure out if somebody is good at programming, because at the end of the day, each problem is a little bit different and has different considerations. And what you need is not somebody who churns out a lot of code, you need somebody who churns out the right amount of code for the right problem. In other words, they need to be able to churn out, dish out a lot of code if the problem is requiring a lot of code. But they also need to be able to take a step back and really think about what they're doing so that they don't just jump in and start adding things without thinking because then you might end up in a situation where you have a lot of code but it's doing the wrong thing. Have a great day.